Hey students, we are so glad that you could join us for this online version of Cove Students. We are in Mexico and we're having a blast, but we're pre-recording this so that you guys can get connected with Jesus. We can worship and we can just have a great time in his word. Um, so we're going to have Kylie lead us in worship and then me and Nathaniel are going to get in the word. We're going to close with worship and then we're going to release you guys to go out and do some great kingdom work this week while we're doing some great kingdom work in Mexico.
Hey students, it's Pastor Lidio and Nathaniel. Nathaniel, and <laughs> we're gone in Mexico. We're having a blast. I'm sure uh, we're recording this pre <laughs> pre Mexico. Yeah, we're having a blast. Um, but we want to make sure that we give you uh, uh, some time during the week to uh, to get connected with the Lord and to worship. And so we're going to look at a passage today that mm-hmm. I know is really close to you. Yeah. Uh, passage that is super cool uh, comes from Luke 19 uh, verses 1 to 10 we're going to talk about Zacchaeus yes I love this story and he said it's close to me not because I'm short or anything but because (laughs) I think this passage is just a great example of Jesus reaching out in love to somebody and uh, just being the gospel to them being the good news to Zacchaeus in this case it's a love this story love talking about it could talk about it forever but um, yeah I mean let's just jump right into it yeah so what we're gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and read it we're gonna do some observations we're gonna see how it applies to our life and then you guys can apply it to your life so uh, Luke 19 verse 1 to 10 says this he Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through and behold there was a man named Zacchaeus He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature, a.k.a. he was short. Short, yep. Yep. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. Um, He has gone in to be with the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and I have defrauded, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Before we get into it, so good. you want to open this up in prayer? Yeah, I'd love to. Cool. God, as we open your word, Lord, we just pray that it would speak to us. God, open our hearts and minds to what you might have to reveal to us, even Lydia and I, as we um, open your word, God, but for everybody listening as well. 
God, we just pray for uh, just your presence to meet these students where they're at, God, um, in their homes, uh, with their friends, wherever they're at right now. God, would you meet them and that they would know that you are with them, uh, even if they're not here at church, because nobody is. It's close tonight. God, so just be with them. Be with us. And uh, Lord, would your name be made great. God, we love you. We praise you. And it's your name we pray. Amen. 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 So what are some observations that you've noticed in this passage? Yeah, I mean, there's just so much. Um, Mm -hmm. For starters, I mean, I just love Zacchaeus, how he didn't let anything come in the way of him seeing Jesus. He was willing to to do whatever it it took, uh, even climbing a tree, which is not something... I'm not the kind of boy as like a Mm -hmm. child who would climb trees all the time. Mm -hmm. Were you that kind of person? You would just like see a tree as a kid and just want to climb it? Yes. I saw a tree and I would climb it. I used to live in... uh, place called uh, Tulare, um, which is kind of deeper into the Central Valley. And we we lived on the edge of a um, uh, an urban kind of building site. And so they were doing new building. They were building new buildings and new yeah. um, houses. And we would go in the dirt and I was just getting and we would go into the trees and we would wow. catch crawdads and yeah. tadpoles and lizards. And yeah, I was all about that. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Very different uh, childhood. I was just sitting inside like a sheltered kid. And uh, <laughs> that's why I'm so pale. I was never outside. But yeah. Well, so so just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I just love that about Zacchaeus. You know, I think I, I shared a little bit ago, uh, maybe it was a couple months ago, Lydia, I shared with the junior hires that faith is kind of like not letting anyone, anything stand in the way of you going to Jesus. That's and that Zacchaeus shows that in this story. So that's just one of the first things that really stands out to me. What about yeah. for you, so Lydia? He, yeah, I, I like that. He had a lot of limitations, mm-hmm. um, a lot of things that would hinder him from seeing Jesus, but he did not let that stand in the way of him seeing Jesus. And even though there's another limitation or an obstacle, and that's other people's opinions yeah. of who Zacchaeus was, um, they called him a sinner, but we're all sinners, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it even tried to hinder Jesus from reaching out to this person. But there were Jesus didn't care yeah. and didn't want didn't um, uh, let those obstacles stop him from reaching Zacchaeus as well. So right. Zacchaeus. Uh, went so far and then Jesus kind of met him halfway. Yeah, right? exactly. Just like yeah. that song, uh, Meet Me Halfway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's great because, yeah, I mean, this crowd of people, not only were they trying to see Jesus, but I'm sure they hated Zacchaeus. They thought they thought little of him, pun intended. Yes. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that the last thing they wanted was to uh, help him out at all. Yet Jesus saw past all of that. So, Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that stands out to me about Jesus's response. Um, I just love how Jesus had an an eye. He kind of looked at the world Mm. and he had his head up and he was looking for somebody to show love to. And he, you know, was surrounded by people. They were all trying to, I'm sure, talk to him and hear from him. Yet he still didn't get lost in all of that craziness. But he he was focused on his, his mission and that's the mission we get at the end of the the ch- uh, story here, but we'll look at that in a second. So that's yeah, one of the yeah, first things that yeah. stands out to me about with Jesus, his response to Zacchaeus' faith. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he calls out to him by name, mm-hmm. right? He calls he calls out Zacchaeus by name. He saw this person as an individual. You know, he was surrounded by some people that wanted to experience Jesus, wanted to hear from Jesus, but um, he saw something about Zacchaeus that was special. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, that Zacchaeus didn't want his stature or any of these limitations to stop him. And Jesus kind of, he focused on that. Yeah. Like this guy. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's so beautiful that, that Jesus knows our name, that he mm-hmm. knows our situation, that he knows our story, and that he too calls us by name. Right? Yes. This is this is a story and not, not that every story uh, translates to our own life, but I, I think we can see that in the way that God speaks throughout the whole Bible, that he's always meeting people where they're at by name yes. and just really showing his heart and his, his love to them in that. Yeah, I wonder great. what people think of when they walk into the church, hmm. right? And they walk into a church or walk into a youth group and there's just so many people, right? Or there's, um, and sometimes I wonder if, we get lost, feel like we get lost in the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
to know that Jesus still is with us personally, um, even in the midst of the crowd, is very comforting. Mm-hmm. To know that um, even there, even when we look at this world and there's billions and billions of people out in this world, Jesus still knows who we are personally. I love yeah. that. That's so good. Yeah. And I was just at a, a Bible study last night, and um, we one of the guys was sharing his prayer request. He was talking about how he's just really f- struggling with a feeling of isolation mm. and really just struggling with loneliness. And, mm. and I'm sure that's exactly the situation we find Zacchaeus in, you know, a, a man who was hated by others. I'm sure he felt isolated and he felt alone, and yet Jesus made a point to love him and, and to see him. And so I just wonder how how God may want to use us in that mm-hmm. as well to, to be that for other people. Cause you never know what the people at, you know, your schools or at yeah. the, in your life, when you go out somewhere on your sports field, you never know what they're going through and, and what they're thinking, get to see them and to love them, I think mm-hmm. is, is really powerful. I wonder if there's a, um, something that we can pull with the fact that he was a tax collector, that he was rich mm-hmm. and how can that apply to today? For people who are in need of Jesus, searching for Jesus, um, because when I look at people who have money, I would think they don't need Jesus, mm. right? They they have everything they want. They can, you know, they can get whatever they want, and yeah. and so I wonder if there's real if if this story sh- reveals to us that there's really no comfort in that, yeah, right? Or there's no salvation in money. Um, in riches or I know that being a tax collector um, there's a stigma with being a tax collector because these guys were known as thieves mm-hmm. right they collected right. money for the government but not just that they would collect extra for themselves mm-hmm. they cheat you know he's like he yeah. says they would fraud people and mm-hmm. they would lie to people yeah yeah and so I mean in, in each of us there's uh, there's a sense of you know uh, De- we, we can defraud people in a different way. Yeah. We can be selfish in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. Um, we can be, especially living in America, we can be rich in a lot of ways. But there's even though there is all that, there is a need for Jesus. But not just that. But it looks like from this passage, there's a need for a relationship. Yeah, that's right. right? So I wonder just how that works in, in lives of students. Yeah. That's great. I mean, you, we didn't even talk about this beforehand. One of the things I wanted to do, you know, it's so important to see stories in the Bible as part of a bigger picture mm-hmm. and to look at the context. I mean, just a little bit ago, Jesus had been approached by a, the rich young ruler. Mm-hmm. And so in his story, it plays out very differently than Zacchaeus. You know, in, in this story, a, a young guy who's rich, he comes to Jesus and he says, what do I need to do to get eternal life? Mm. He, Jesus says, you know, you need to be perfect, essentially, because uh, we know that that's God's standard is perfection. He's perfect. And so we know that Jesus made a way for us. And, and this young ruler doesn't know that yet. But he says, you know, what? you need to be perfect. And, and the guy says, you know what? All these things I've done. And Jesus wow. says, one thing you still lack. And this is the chapter before. This is in verse 22. That's good. He says, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the ruler heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Such a different response from this ruler than Zacchaeus. And so I think that that's probably why we get Zacchaeus' name, because he's a good guy and he (laughs) listens to Jesus. We don't know the rich young ruler's name. Yeah, um, yeah, just a different response in, you know, what is going to get in the way of your relationship with Jesus. You're going to let anything kind of stand in the way of that. So it's really cool that you mentioned that. Yeah, sometimes we can be uh, rich in our own ways and be selfish, mm-hmm. and that can really keep us from what God has for us. Yeah, and it looks like here that Jesus, that Zacchaeus, didn't want that to get in the way. That's right. You know, I don't know if he was there for that that event um, before this, but um, he said, "Well, you know, I don't want any of this stuff to get in the way mm-hmm. of my relationship with you." And then because of that, um, Jesus says that salvation has come to this house. Yeah. Right? And I think a lot of people freaked out by that statement. I'm sure, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, wow, this guy can be saved. This, You want a relationship with this guy. You want to hang out with this guy. And it really says a lot about the, the heart of Jesus. Yeah, that's it really does. Good. Totally. That's really good. Well, that's great. And I just love, you know, the whole story kind of comes to completion. And then in verse 10, we just get 
Um, one of the most important verses, I think, in, in Luke, it says, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Yes. What does that mean for you, Lydia, when you think about that in your life? Good question. You know, seeking and saving the lost. Um, I always, when I, when I listen to this verse and I listen to the concept of seeking and saving the lost, I always think of my own life. Mm-hmm. Right? I think of how God saved me. I think of my personal um, downfall because of sin and the sin of the world, how um, empty I, I was because of my uh, dysfunctional home and living on the, pretty much living on the streets and, um, and just living a life of sin and debauchery. Um, look up debauchery in the dictionary to know what that really means. Yeah, it's not a good thing. That's for <laughs> sure. It's not, not a godly good. thing. <laughs> Filthy rags and just that whole that whole lifestyle and just I remember how empty I was. Um, and when Jesus reached out to me and how fulfilled I was, and I because of uh, I think I could empathize mm. with people who yeah. are who are um, lost, especially those who are you know teenagers, young people, um, because I've. I lived that life, and I remember what it was like. And so, I'm uh, I, I'm I'm not completely sensitive to it, but I think I, because I, uh, I know what the what that look looks like when, um, as a teenager, when you're when you you've had a similar background, then I can because of that empathy, I could kind of reach out a little bit and yeah. know what questions to ask people, um, how how. S- how to be sensitive in mm-hmm. that, and um, and just pray and ask God, like, where is an open door for you to really speak into this person's life, mm-hmm. into this situation, um, circumstance? Because we're all different, um, but it really takes the Holy Spirit to um, to know how to to connect with somebody who was lost. Yeah. Um, and then I think about how, what, when I was found, when I got saved and I rededicated my life to the Lord, then I remember what steps I took to get closer to Jesus, yeah. go to church, pray, right. read my Bible, things like that. And so, um, and they're re- really basic things, right? And so yeah. uh, for, for students, for young people, for pe- just people in general, I always think about how God reached me mm-hmm. and then... I can do the same for others. Um, I think Paul says in one of his letters, follow me as I follow Christ. That's right. Um, I might not know the Bible like really, really good, all the Hebrew and the Greek, but I know Jesus, right? (laughs) And so I can just take my personal experience with Jesus and help somebody else along in their personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Um, uh, Maybe to go a step back into the whole concept of seeking and saving is... Um, somebody had to go beyond their comfort zone mm-hmm. to reach me, right? Yeah. Um, they Somebody had to walk into a skate shop to connect with me. Somebody had to walk to a skate park. Somebody had to walk to, um, had to drive on the, on the bad side of town to pick me up and take me to church, yeah. you know? So right. um, for me, that's what I think of when I think of seeking and saving. It's going beyond, um, it's, it's breaking down those obstacles. Mm-hmm. It's going beyond mm-hmm. our comfort yeah. level. Or a comfort zone, and and seeing what Jesus will do yeah. in the life of somebody else. You know, for um, I'm going to ask you the same question. Yeah, okay, I'm going to be ready for for our students. Um, there's a challenge there. Of, you know, you guys uh, sit next to people in your class. You guys mm-hmm. rub shoulders with people at lunch, maybe in your sports team, or just wherever in life. Your neighbor, um, if you wherever you are in life, there there are people that are lost and God wants to use you to save them or to, to be in the process of their salvation. But, um, what is it going to take for students? What is it going to take for you guys to go beyond your comfort zone? Right. Yeah. To do what Jesus did in, in Zacchaeus. So, but what do you think when, when it, you know, how do you, how would you apply this seeking and saving the lost in your life? Yeah. I mean, um, that's great answer Lydia thanks for sharing that um I'm gonna take a a little uh, not as deep approach into (laughs) into life as that but this just reminds me of um a story that I have in my life of oh gosh a couple of years ago no not a couple of years ago a long time ago Mm -hmm. um when I was probably like 13 yeah probably when I was like 13 uh my parents took me my brother my nephew Mm -hmm. to Legoland 
and we had a blast. I mean, I'm still about Legos to this day. I mean, I could build anything, Lego Star Wars sets, right? Like, I just love it. I want to get the Lego Advent Calendar every year. Mm -hmm. So we're at Legoland. We're having a great time. We're at um, this playground, you know, like maybe our second day there, mm -hmm. we're at this playground, and we're playing hide and seek, which, yeah. as I learned, is not probably a really good thing to play at a big theme park <laughs> right. because my nephew is really good at hiding and he goes outside oh, of the bounds no. of the game he leaves the play area and to this day it's kind of my parents fault and i hope they don't see this because uh, they'll be mad i said that because they were supposed to watch the uh, the kind of the, the entrance right yes. um and so my brother and i are searching and we're searching and we cannot find my nephew and so we go we ask my dad and my mom like hey have you seen my nephew and no, I haven't seen. Okay, so now my dad starts to look, and he's going, "Okay, where is he?" We're searching everywhere. We're searching everywhere. Finally, we call somebody. We're like, "Hey, we need help to to find my nephew." And so they go on their walkie-talkie, and somebody finds him, and he's just out looking at the Lego build Lego buildings that they have, and he's just sitting there. He's just minding his own business. He's in his own world. Just forgot we were playing hide and seek, I guess, and. We found him, and we, we kind of brought him back, and we said, hey, maybe don't do that. Um, but it just makes me think about, like, we search, and, you know, and how we got to actually show our love for him and trying to find him. Yes. You know, like, if I would have been like, oh, you know what? Well, that's a bummer. I guess I need to find a new nephew. Or if we would have been like, oh, you know, that's his fault. He got himself into this mess. He can get himself out of that mess, you know. How unloving would that have been oh. for me to, or my parents to have said that and for us to just kind of have gone about our business and done what we wanted. But no, we dropped everything. We, we stopped everything we were doing yes. and our only mission was to find oh, my nephew so when he needed to be found. And so that's what I see Jesus doing, you know. It's kind of like Zacchaeus got lost at Legoland. Yes. And it's like so many people in our lives around us as well. And yet Jesus stopped everything, stopped what he was doing, and searched for Zacchaeus wow. and found him and brought him back. And so that's just kind of the funny kind of story yeah, that I so that I have in my life. And I still want to go back to Legoland. I'm not banned or anything, but if you guys want to give me tickets, but... Um, that's what I think of when I think of this seeking and saving the lost. Speaking, that reminds me. Speaking of, I hope somebody doesn't watch this video. My son Jaden, right? That reminds me of a story. Um, and as a father, I, I feel, right? When you're sharing that story, that like it, uh, I can feel like deep inside, internally, like that, 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 that urgency, mm -hmm. right? Um, when we, uh, I took Jaden out to, um, and the, the family out to the pier. Mm -hmm. And, uh, here 59 or what I something like that yeah, in, in San Francisco. Francisco yeah we were walking around and I had Jaden and he was like he was like three or four yeah. right um, and we we're walking around and for one second I let go of his hand or something and I look around and he's gone oh wow right and I am freaking out yeah like for, and, and it probably um, and we found him probably about a minute or two later like he was just maybe 20 feet um, and uh, but it felt like an eternity mm -hmm. right but I was focused on one thing right find <laughs> my son yeah. Jaden right? yeah you weren't worried about the donuts you could get I was, or yes. the, the silver statue man you were you stopped <laughs> focusing on that yeah, yeah yeah and that's the urgency of Jesus and um uh, that's the urgency of a father. That's the urgency of Jesus. That's right. And for our students, you know, I, um, I, maybe that's the urgency that we want to, mm. you know, uh, foster in, in youth ministry is, you know, we cannot go to your campuses. We cannot. We can a little bit. Yeah, right? we can a little we bit. Don't we don't can't have, talk to everybody. Yes. Yeah. We can't talk to everybody. If, if you guys just uh, t talk to one other person. Right, mm -hmm. our youth group can reach one hundred uh, people. Yeah, in in just yeah. in one conversation, right, or in one relationship. But we know more people, mm -hmm. and so um, I just want to encourage you guys. You know, uh, for me, it like I said before, it took somebody to recognize me, to take the time mm -hmm. to to know who I was, and to have that relationship. It didn't look perfect, and I was not the guy that back then. I wasn't the guy that um, was. The, the guy that everybody wanted to hang out with, 
Right. What? <laughs> I was the guy. No, I was not. That's crazy. I'm not cool enough. You know, I was, <laughs> I was, um, I was, I was the punk skater that no, it was, I was, I was frightening to some people, but somebody reached out to me and I'm, uh, you know, there are, um, people on your campuses, people in your lives mm -hmm. that, um, that God wants to use you to reach them. And, uh, for you, if you don't know Christ. Yeah, that's right. Right. Jesus, Jesus, he, he loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. He knows your name. Mm -hmm. He knows your, your struggles. He knows the obstacles that it's going to take for you to reach him. And he wants to meet you as far as, as, as he needs to go for you to meet him halfway. That's right. Um, and then, uh, and, and say, and save you. So I love this passage. I love uh, what we can kind of pull from it um, and how we could apply apply this to our lives. Um, yeah. Yeah. Any any last words? No, any I, last I, comments? I think you did a great job. And yeah, I kind of see, like you said, there's a couple places we might be at and maybe mm -hmm. we're in Zacchaeus' shoes right now, his little tiny shoes. And we uh, maybe don't know Jesus, but we, we want to see him. We want to meet him. Or maybe yes. we know him and we've just kind of lost our way. And, and so, yeah, what, are you willing to climb the tree to, to see Jesus, right? Are you willing to do what it takes to maybe ask your parents to, to let you come to church? Mm -hmm. Or are you willing to maybe open up your Bible and just start reading somewhere to, to see about Jesus? I don't know what it is for you, but I think there's a next step for all of us that's climbing that tree in order to see Jesus and so that's just my challenge for us and mm -hmm. and yeah and just be keep your head up you know it says that Jesus looked up and saw Zacchaeus and and I think in a day and age where we're glued to mm -hmm. our phones and we are not that there's anything wrong with this I have one um, but you know we we keep our heads down and we don't see what's going on around us and so mm -hmm. I think it's important for us to keep our keep our head up and to see people to know names to reach out. And it's just so important. Maybe there's somebody that you need to reach out to right now. That, you know, you can pause this video. That's the cool thing about it being a video and not in <laughs> real life. You can't pause this in real life. But maybe you need to reach out to somebody who you've just been thinking about, God's put on your heart. I don't know. Yeah, that's but good. I love that's that. just how I would uh, wrap things up here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to build a tree in order to get up to the loft for youth group. <laughs> okay. That would be Do cool. you really want to experience Jesus? Treehouse Blind youth group? Treehouse oh, wow. youth group. That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> Cool, man. Let's pray, and then we'll let you guys go and do what we've been um, uh, uh, talking about and watch just God do some amazing things. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. Just thank you for this time. We can chat about um, your word. It's so it's so rich and so deep. And Father, it, um, as we read it, uh, we uh, echo your voice telling us that you love us so much. You know us by name. Um, and you are here to seek and to save us individually. Mm -hmm. Um, but also corporately in our schools and in our communities and our neighborhoods. Father, I pray that you would use each student who's watching, um, first of all, to know you as Lord and Savior, but also to be used by you, that um, our sphere of influence uh, would be reached um, for the kingdom. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this time. Uh, bless us as we are in Mexico. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cool. Awesome.